Have you ever found yourself looking at a blank canvas and you feel like you cannot start drawing? Some call this art block, some call this perfectionism, but I found myself struggling to draw on and on and on and on and I created nothing. This video from a non-artist actually inspired me to create this piece. What is up you guys? In this video, I'm gonna be redrawing a picture that Emma Chamberlain did. Drawing is not hard. You just pick up a pencil, pick up a Cintiq, pick up an Apple pencil and you just start drawing. It's literally that simple. And that's exactly what I did in this video. Let me show you the clip that inspired me and we'll get right into the drawing process. So I was looking on YouTube as usual and I found this video by Emma Chamberlain. She's literally just drawing. She doesn't care about the outcome. She's just drawing for fun. And it really sparked something in me. So after seeing this final picture, I decided I was gonna go in and draw my version of this picture. So I started with the human form. Now, I've already laid out some things here. I'll be fair and say that this is not completely from scratch because as you can see, I've already have some of the baselines. In the future, I will have videos where I start completely from the beginning. So don't even worry about it because we're gonna get there. We're gonna touch on that. Um, but I will say that I've been heavily inspired by the artist Angel Ganev. Geneve, I think it's, I think that's his name. I'm not exactly sure, um, but he touches on how to draw the human head with using like a grid uh, shape. And I just hit everything. I'll bring everything back, and you'll see the grid pattern that I have over the face right here. You can see like a line going through the middle of the face, a line for the arch of the eyebrow ridge, and then there's some lines going back to kind of define the size of the skull of the face. So I've been using that method a lot to help me kind of map out the features of the face very simply without having to take a whole lot of time to define everything and just make sure everything is really cohesive. Now I am using a reference on the side of this, but I am loosely using that. I'm not really committed to it. I am taking some creative liberties. So right now I'm going in, I'm defining the eye, I'm getting the shape of the eye, I'm putting, you know, the pupil in there, making sure the form looks good, and it's fairly easy to map in an eye, so I'm not taking a whole lot of time doing it. In fact, I like this right here. So I'm gonna erase the other eye, and then I'm just going to duplicate this. So you can see me now selecting the selection tool, selecting copy and paste at the bottom, and then I'm going to move it over to the side, kind of rotate it a little bit, because one thing I found is when you flip things horizontally in Procreate, they don't always flip perfectly in alignment. So I'm fixing the alignment just a little bit here to make sure that they are lined up properly. And you can see me now taking out some of those guiding lines. And now I'm beginning to take out some of the lines where the nose is because the nose, I like it to be very simple and I don't really like the guiding lines down the middle of the face. So right now you can see me using some guiding lines to define where the nose is gonna fall. So I'm erasing away those guidelines and I'm making the simple uh, suggestion of the nose at the bottom. I really like this minimalistic approach. It has like a cartoony type of feel to it. I don't like my work to feel super like realistic. So I'm staying committed to that here and you can see that it's gonna be very minimal and kind of have that cartoony feel that I like. I'm erasing away the mouth because now where I have the nose, it wouldn't make sense for the mouth to be so far down. So I'm bringing the mouth up just a little bit so that it can fill in the space a little bit better. So I'm, I don't really have like a super great approach to drawing a mouth. I just kind of look at a mouth and, and try to draw it. I've seen in a lot of my older drawings that when I draw the mouth, I always have it like opened a little bit and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like this thing that girls do on Pinterest all the time, but sometimes it can come off very uh, stale and feel lifeless. So I try to do it in a way where it looks good still, but I feel like you can see right here, it just looks kind of stoic and it really doesn't say anything. One thing that I have been guilty of when I draw facial expressions is my work can look very lifeless and it can look very, just like it's just drained of any personality. So I'm trying to give it a little bit of a character 
without having it super expressive like it's not a screaming face or like a super surprised terrified you know look i want it to really just be normal and just looking into the distance but have a little personality too so i'm erasing away the mouth you can see because i felt like it was looking too just generic and lifeless so i'm going in and doing another attempt at it i think i ultimately land on it looking pretty closed but i'm still experimenting at this phase with it and when i'm drawing i don't feel like i need a rush i like to take my time i like to zoom out zoom back in sometimes you'll see in this process that i take moments to just look at it and just process and think about what i want to do next it's not all about drawing i think drawing is really about observation and problem solving so in the process of creating this you'll see me taking a lot of time to just look and observe what i want to do next i also want to say if you've been watching this far first of all thank you but i want you guys to draw with me so pull out your pencil pull out your pens get out your cintiq get out your wacom tablet get out your apple pencil and ipad and let's go together you don't need a particular uh, advice you don't need a particular device to follow this video i really want to inspire you guys to just start drawing it's really not that deep it doesn't have to look like my style it doesn't have to look like Emma's style it needs to be just something that's true to you you know draw what you feel draw what comes natural to you I think that's the most important thing and it, it's empowering too to your own creative process sometimes I find if I'm putting a lot of energy and trying to draw like someone else it just feels draining like it just it feels like it's just it makes what they're doing so much more important and I just beat myself down by trying to be them and you can't be them even if you do their style perfectly i think the best version of you doing someone else's style or doing their work is making some changes to really fit your taste and, and what fits with your aesthetic better i think that is actually better tell your own story make your own characters right so one thing that i'm doing now is just drawing in the jawline you can see i suggested where the chin will be with a little bit of a circle under the mouth i like to do that because it reminds me that there are you know shapes in the face under the skin so it kind of keeps everything cohesive and i like it to feel a little bit 3d not super flat um, so in my mind, I feel like that helps me to do that. So right now I'm looking at the neck I'm realizing that the neck is really not it's just too thick Like it just looks like a football player wrestler neck So I need to bring it down just a little bit so that it reads properly here um, So you can see me making some changes to the neck editing around where the neck is really trying to find the best proportions to make this read properly and now that i have a lot of the head shape outlined i'm now noticing that there are other parts in the body that are just not aligned properly i mean it looks okay but i feel like the head is just giant and the body does not fit the head so i'm going to make some changes you can see me right now using the selection tool to move the collarbone over so that it's a little bit more balanced i will make some changes to the shoulders as well because now everything kind of changes uh, the body itself like the abdomen the chest the hips um, i will make changes to that as well but i feel like where it's sitting it's fine um, like i said i kind of have done the general shapes oh that's my dog in the bottom of left bottom right of the picture just chilling you know what i'm saying just chilling like a villain but i'll make some changes to the shapes of like the arms and the abdomen as we go on and just take your time it's no rush no one's judging you for your sketching technique i think the most important thing is what comes out the final piece that's the most important thing and i really enjoy personally the process of getting there more than the final picture um so you'll see me take a lot of time in this process so now i'm taking out more of the guiding lines now that i've got the face looking the way i want it to i'm just taking out some of those lines that i had on the skull and the head around the the different shapes of the uh the skull and i'm taking those out kind of revealing that eyebrow arch a little bit more and i have some other lines that you can see on the side of the head that i'm now taking out as well and there are my eyebrows 
boom, shakalaka, boom. I think I will go back in and kind of define them a little bit more, but they're there and it's done for the most part. Now, at this point, you can add your ears and I will go in and start to add the ears in. I feel like with ears, it's so important to make sure that they fall where the eyes and the nose are. I feel like that looks the best or it has looked the best generally when I draw ears. So I'm not really trying to make the ears look exactly the same here. I'm just trying to make them look similar. I don't really stress out about ears. Most of the time in my drawings, the ears are covered up by hair anyway. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. So I reset the camera. I'm taking a step back. I might have walked away and came back from a little bit of a break. And I'm just looking at everything from a distance. I like to pull things out and get an idea of how everything is sitting. And I'm just now seeing that the lines around the form, the lines around the arm are a little bit bigger than the rest of the sketch. But I really, before tackling that, I want to flip the canvas over and look at the face before moving forward. And I can see that the features of the face are just not looking right. They just look a little bit weird. Um, so I would always suggest flipping your canvas because it's gonna give you so much clarity with your drawings and you're gonna be able to see things that you would never see on your own. There may be moments where you're like, hmm, something is wrong here, but I'm not a, I'm not sure exactly like what it is. So flipping the canvas will definitely help you identify those things that are happening when you're drawing. So now I'm kind of going in and I'm defining the shape that I just added. Uh, when I moved the face over a little bit there, it added some opening. So I had to fill in those spaces a little bit, clean it up, make it look a little bit more cohesive, make it look nice. Uh, so you can see me cleaning it up right now. When I originally began this, I really wanted it to just look not like emotionless, because I've already mentioned that if I haven't already, if you guys don't know, I was really inspired by concept artists. I went to art school and my focus was like concept art and that was something I was really excited about. My major was like animation, so it was diverse and media arts. So, I mean, that's photography, that's video editing, that's 3D, 2D animation, life drawing. There's so many things within that topic. But the thing that I found myself drawn to after kind of getting a feel for all the different mediums within media arts and animation was concept art. I really wanted to like make characters and I really wanted to create worlds and stuff. So I really stuck to the character element. And when I found myself making these stoic, lifeless looking characters that aesthetically they looked really cool, you know, they had cool outfits, but I really wasn't communicating their personality very well. And I think this is a very good illustration of that. I'm trying to give some subtle emotion, but it's not really hitting me. It's not, I don't really have a sense for who this character is by this drawing. And I, that's something that I really wanna work on as this year progresses, making sure that the characters that I draw have intentionality and just be focusing on that with your own drawing. Think about, the facial expression and character that they would be exuding just by standing because different characters are going to stand differently if they have different motivations and it's like a sad character that's more closed off from a confident character that's more open and like boisterous it, it just changes everything so i wish i would have taken more time to think about that i think with this drawing because of the reference that I was using from Emma's drawing, it was just a very like straight on face and like the arm, it was just very straight on. So I kind of took motivation from that. I really wasn't sure what she intended behind the character that she made, but I got the sense that it was more of a shy character. So I, you know what? I guess I was thinking about the personality after all, maybe a little bit, maybe not really. I'm trying to just give myself that, you know? But it's okay. I, I'm excited about discussing these topics, some things that I feel kind of inadequate about that are good to discuss. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So if you feel the same way, put it in the comments below. Let me know I'm not alone, you know, in this process. And we can talk about it together in the comments a little bit. So I'm taking some time to, I just really like 
fixing the lines and going over the lines and really thinking. I just, I'm taking my time. I think I have something playing on the side of this. So I'm probably watching a video or something. I'm not just charging into finishing this picture. Um, but while you're drawing, just take some time within the process to step back, look at things. Uh, if you're using a tablet or some type of digital drawing tablet device, take a second and zoom out. Take a second and step back. Maybe take a 10 minute break and come back um, and see how things are going. I think that's really important. I think it helps you to really create something that is very well thought out. Because one of the things that I found and I learned from an art teacher that I went to school or that taught me was you know, don't polish poop, you know, don't continue to charge through a drawing that's not going anywhere. You know, you're drawing the details of the belt and the face looks crazy or the proportions are out of line. I think it's so important to take that time and you'll get faster over time. It's okay to just have a process and understand your strengths and weaknesses and just tackle them as you go. You're not supposed to be like an amazing artist overnight. It's okay. Take your time, breathe, you'll get there. So right now you can see me looking at the lines, kind of redrawing the lines, erasing away lines that I feel like are not working. They gave me suggestions for the shape, but they're not gonna be the final lines to represent the shapes of the form here. So I'm starting to take some of those out, reassess how I want her body to, you know, kind of work. And I also apologize because my hand is all up in the way. You know what I'm saying right now? Um, this is my first time doing a video like this or maybe second, third. So I'm a little bit rusty at this and I'm still learning. So be, be easy on me guys in the comments. Don't, don't rip me apart. But now I'm starting to draw out the legs. I really wanna make sure that it sticks with what I had here originally because I think the general form is exactly what I wanna go for. I might make the waist a little bit smaller. I like to have that hourglass shape, um, but I, I feel like making this character have a little bit more hip uh, to it, a little bit more volume in the legs is something I'm cool with. It kind of reminds me of like Loish. I feel like her characters have this kind of, of, of a shape to them. So maybe I'm thinking about that as I'm drawing this, who knows? But that's definitely a source of inspiration. Um, for work. If you don't know uh, Loish, then I can't, I don't know her last name, so I'm not even gonna say it, but if you're familiar with uh, Loish's work, I'm sure you know how it looks generally. And this form is very similar to how most of her characters kind of look. So I'm bringing things in a little bit here, and I think I'm gonna tackle this arm a little bit more. I want to fix the right arm because it looks a little bit crazy. I think originally I was thinking of just making it fall behind the body. Uh, I have this thing where I really don't want to draw hands. So that's something that I do want to tackle because drawing hands expressively adds so much. It's like a superpower in your characters. So that's something that I do want to get better at. So I'm going in the form around the lines, just kind of shaping the lines. And one thing that I do with my drawings is I'm constantly looking to erase away lines and erase within the lines that are already drawn to better define the shapes. I find that when I do this, my drawings feel more like organic and lively. I really like, it's like one of my favorite things to do. So you'll see that throughout this entire process that I'm constantly going in and I am drawing the lines, I am redrawing the lines, or I'm erasing away lines to better uh, communicate what I'm trying to go for here. I think with this drawing, I'm because it's gonna cut off a little bit, I'm just gonna end it before the knees here. So you can see me kind of creating a bottom to the legs where the knees would start uh, as the bottom of this uh, picture. So I'm taking a, a few moments to kind of look at everything. I'm gonna tackle this arm next, and I'm just going one section at a time. I've already put in the general shapes. I know what I'm going for here. I've already figured that out with the basic sketch at the beginning. So now it's just time to redefine forms and make it look a little bit nicer. 
So now some of these elements I will cover with clothes. Um, obviously it's not gonna just be a birthday suit. So some of these won't be as important, but you'll see as we progress that having this detail is gonna be really valuable to the end of this because you really use a lot of the form to inform how the clothes fall, you know? It really helps when you're drawing clothes later on. Um, but yeah, I've been drawing the human form for a while in this particular style, um, so I feel very comfortable with it. So I'm just going in, cleaning up the lines, redrawing the lines, and just making sure that everything looks cohesive, making sure that the lines look the same on this side of the body. And I just did something here that I'm gonna regret. I just cut the arm a little bit. And I'm gonna have to add that back, but I think the arm was a bit too long for the proportions. I didn't measure it out, but as time goes on, you'll be able to eye these things, and you just know, you know, what fits. I, I wanna, at one point, implement and kind of show you guys how to do that. Um, because you can see now what I'm doing uh, when my hand is out of the way is I'm drawing a broken hand uh, that doesn't really look right and, and you'll see that because I didn't start with the general shape first and sometimes you need to sometimes you don't need to but in this case you can see that hand looks like it's broken off and it looks crazy so I'm gonna erase that away and then I use a basic shape to redraw it in. So you can see me undoing right now on the side of the tablet and I'll redraw that in. Um, I'm pretty sure I redraw it now, but I may come back. I don't remember exactly what I did in the process. But I'm looking at it, I'm eyeing it, I'm really seeing that it, it's thicker, like the, the wrist is a little bit too thick there. Um, but I decided to tackle the other arm instead and then I'll come back to that. That's one thing that I do. Like if I find some resistance with certain areas, I'm like, okay, I'm just jump to this other area. That's one thing that I do. I just, maybe I'm not ready to solve the problem yet. So I'll just come back to it. And when I have more perspective or more clarity, or maybe one side of the figure is more balanced, then I can come back to it with a clear mind and better tackle it. And one thing too, it, it helps me to balance it with the other side as well. So it's not just like I'm drawing one independent part, I'm kind of drawing them together to kind of match. And you can see me like moving from one arm to the next, just to make sure that they're hitting like the same um, spacing as the arm goes down. You know, like it's it's the same proportions, like they're, they're looking the same. So you can see already that arm looks better than the, the previous arm. It's especially at the wrist, like you can see it, it just looks more natural. So like I said before, taking some moments to just look at everything. And you know what, it's so funny to watching this back because I was so self-conscious about doing this video because it takes me forever to draw. Like I take my time, I just noodle through it, there's no rush. You know, and you see all these like super speed drawing videos on YouTube. This is reality here. You know what I'm saying? Drawings are done in hours to two hours. And uh, I think this this is about in that time span, but it's just a sketch. I'm not, I don't have a deadline. I'm not working at a studio where I'm like, hey, get this done right now. So this is for fun. And I'm going to take my time here. I think one thing too, it helps to just be intentional with what you're drawing. Um, I'm, I'll do faster drawings in the future, but it just helps to just take that stress off of yourself, at least for me, you know, so that really helps me to get through the drawing and stay motivated while I'm drawing without putting pressure on myself. Unless I'm doing like a, you know, draw this in 10 minutes, like type of challenge or something, I don't see the need to speed through a drawing. Like for who? Who am I speeding through the drawing for, you know? Since the timelines and deadlines are just in my mind, I'm taking my time. So you can see now that I've added in the hair. This didn't take a lot of work. I just kind of blocked in the shape. I really wanted to feel like a cloud. I really wanted to feel big and full. Uh, so you can see that in the shape here. Now I have used a mask to mask out the frame of the skull. 
I like to use masks a lot, especially when I'm adding hair and stuff like that. I like to add the hair on a different layer as well. I just feel like sometimes I might want to change it and I don't want to have to worry about erasing a whole bunch of details or a whole bunch of work that I've already done uh, with the picture. So I'll just put the hair on a separate layer. And I really found that to work super well for me uh, as I'm drawing. So I'm looking at the collarbone, trying to make sure that everything connects. And I just undid that line. I want to make it a little bit smoother. And I'm gonna go back and do it again. Like, this is this is it. This is the process, right? The brush was a little bit too big, so I made it a bit smaller so that I would fit a little bit better. Um, and I think I'm happy with how that line looks and how it connects and everything. One thing too I'll say, if you guys have watched my previous video where I talked about my sketchbook brushes that I put on Gumroad, um, those brushes were very thin and they really look just like the mechanical pencil because I, in the past when I did traditional drawings primarily, I would draw a lot with mechanical brushes or mechanical pencils <laughs> and it was so easy to do, the lines were very clean and I like my drawings to have very clean lines. That's just something I enjoy personally. Um, it gets annoying because it takes forever so eventually I'll probably get out of that but today I really enjoy that, uh, making my lines look very clean. So you can see me kind of going back and cleaning up the lines and making sure everything looks good. I kind of want to keep some of these sketch lines and part of the reason why I draw kind of messy to begin with is because I feel like when I draw characters sometimes those sketchy lines can really help. They add movement, they're very organic and sometimes they can even help me like draw the clothing or find the silhouette like if you're drawing like a character that's wearing like a whole bunch of like um like a like a um like if you're drawing a character that has a bunch of like ornamental garb garb like if you're drawing a character that has like a lot of ornamental like garbs and like a headdress or some earrings like you can get some really cool organic shapes that you would not get normally, even with reference in the sketch process. Even hair, like a lot of times when I'm sketching out a drawing, I'll keep the hair very loose because it really goes with the energy that I want the picture to have or like the emotion or the atmospheric, you know, feeling that I want it to have if it's like really sad or it's like somebody going off and they're having like a power up, you know, like they're going, you know, super saiyan mode or something. Sometimes it's cool to have those crazy elements in the drawing uh, where you can pull from to kind of even make it even more exaggerated. Um, so I really like to go with that. I definitely, as you can see, have like an anime influence and a like semi-realism influence in my work. So I'm not trying to make, like I said before, super realistic stuff. So having those influences to pull on to exaggerate my drawings even more. I mean, I, I'm coming from comic books. Like that was something that I really enjoyed. I have a whole stash and that may be something that I tackle in the future, maybe redrawing some comic book pages. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, we'll see. But I really enjoy that medium. So that was a big inspiration for me. The X-Men. Oh my, don't, I mean the Avengers. Okay. The Avengers, I like them, right? But the X-Men, no comparison. Like Avengers don't even come close. It's kind of funny and crazy that they, Marvel, got me to even like the Avengers. You know, I'm switching topics, I'm sorry. But how, how did that happen? Because I wasn't even on Captain America's radar, okay? Black Panther who? Didn't even know him like that. I just, all I knew is Black Panther was married to Storm. Okay, for those that are not X-Men fans, you're just like, what are you talking about? But the point is, I really enjoy X-Men. I really enjoy the stories, the comics, everything like that. So I'm sure at some point, I'll be dabbling in the X-Men universe for some drawings. I have a drawing right now that I can think of, like top of my brain, that I'll probably be bringing into here at some point. I really want to maybe redraw some of these sketches that I've done in the past too, because I have so many sketches that I've drawn and I just kind of got to a point artistically where I was like, man, I'm drawing better than I'm able to paint. And I was just very frustrated with 
my lack of painting skills you know some of you guys i'm sure you can look at my work and be like oh like this is cool or whatever but personally when you're looking at much better work from other artists it always makes you have like this expectation that's beyond your ability so i was never super happy with that uh my output of work but part of this channel is just putting it out there and not caring so that's what this video is for this is a big step for me and I hope you guys are drawing along and it can be a big step for you as well like let's start drawing you guys let's start doing it so I'm taking a moment to step back look at everything I don't like the way the shape at the bottom of the face looks or the hair is on the left so I am gonna go undo that I'm doing it now boom I knew it I could feel it I could feel it so I'm taking that out because it just looks like her hair is eating her face to me. It's just too much. It's too cloudish, you know? So I, I don't want it to look too matchy-matchy on both sides. Um, so I'm changing that up a little bit so that it has a little bit of a difference from side to side. I'm not sure exactly why I'm taking so much time with this part, um, but you can see characteristic of my process. I don't mind taking my time and I'm in no rush at all as you can see. So I'm gonna jump ahead just a little bit and you can see that I've added some of the features of the shirt. I found a shirt online. I can't think of the website, but I just looked up like t-shirt and I found this really unique looking shirt uh, from Emma's original drawing. It was a very standard like v-neck type of t-shirt and I was like, let me add something different. Let me be unique, right? So I added a little bit of a variation here to it so that it could just be a little bit unique, you know? It gotta be unique out here. So one thing that I'm doing to define the shapes of the shirt is I'm using the body. I mean, I did all this work, right? To do all these shapes. So I really wanna use a lot of that information and build around that for the actual shirt. So I'm trying to build folds um, where I think that they would fall organically. Unfortunately, the reference that I used, maybe I could have got a better reference, but I knew this would just be like a sketch and I wasn't really, you know, really freaking out about it but in the future I would always say get a reference that kind of fits with what you're trying to go to uh, what you're trying to get to go come across and at the very least you can build like your mental library so the next time you tackle a situation like this you'll be like oh I, it kind of goes like this or it kind of falls like this and you'll know how to go about doing it it will be less you know stress on you so now I'm drawing the shirt kind of has like where it folds in the front so I'm trying to draw those folds and I draw them very loosely. I think at this point I was kind of like, okay, I'm drawing slow. Let's get through this. Uh, I was enjoying it though. So I'm trying to get some of those folds in there, but as I zoom in, you can see to me, it looks very like stiff and just too digital. It doesn't look like a drawing to me. So I'm going to go back in with a bit of a smaller brush, the same brush though, and redraw some of those elements. I find that for me, if I can keep the pencil down on the surface of the iPad, my lines look better. Like if I build the lines versus just like draw a line, pick up your pen, draw a line, pick up your pen. I feel like it looks better with my Apple pencil if I kind of keep the um, keep it on contact to the surface, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm a big fan of just building my lines. Like that, like I said before, that is my thing. That's my favorite thing to do. To do. Okay, I got excited. Da -da -da. So you can see me building the lines, building the folds. I don't know if I really had a reference for this. I was just kind of eyeing it. This really reminds me of some of, the, some of the things that I've done for hair in the past to keep everything smooth and looking natural and having the folds kind of go into each other. I think I've drawn leaves like this before too. So it's funny how you can draw from different things that have nothing to do with what you're drawing currently to kind of give you an idea of what you want to do. And that's what I'm doing here to build these lines up. So as usual, I'm pulling back a little bit, seeing what I have, seeing how everything looks. I really like to do this to give myself kind of perspective, clarity about what to do next. 
And then I'm going back in. I am going back in. I will say too, like when I started drawing, I really like to zoom out, start like drawing from there. And the crazy thing is when you draw small, you have much more control of like the gesture and the movement and like the energy of the drawing. There's been so many drawings in my sketchbook and I didn't really realize like, but drawing smaller is a lot easier. You are really drawing bigger. Drawing smaller is drawing bigger when you think about it. And the cool thing about using it on like a thing like this, you can make a giant canvas and you can just zoom out and draw and it just makes things so much easier. So I think I did that with this picture as well when I started, but we'll go over that at some point, maybe not in this video, but just a little tip, throwing it out there, just so you know. So right now the iPad Pro is sliding all over the place like crazy. Um, I wanna get something different to draw on in the future, so we'll, we'll get there. We're not there yet, we're just we're struggling. This is the struggle phase, okay? So just struggle with me a little bit. I'm just gonna slide a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? This is this is life trying to tell me to take a break from drawing, but I'm refusing to do it. Okay? I will not quit. I will not quit for anything. Uh, oh, neck is getting involved. Neck is getting involved in this. All right. So here we go. Back to the drawing. I'm going back to some of these details. You can see as I zoom in, like this is rough. You know what I'm saying? The lines are not crisp and perfect. I'm okay with that. That's something that I'm fine with. You can clean them over time as you go. And you're not gonna start with crisp lines as you start anyway. Like, come on. Nobody's gonna just be like, okay, uh, perfect line. I just drew it. Okay, oh, let me do another perfect line. Did it. It's just not realistic. So you can see me drawing some more lines around the, like the pelvis area, around the front of hers, like the bottom stomach. And I really want to make sure that that's defined because I now have this skirt blocked in. And as you can see, it is kind of form fitting. So you would see some of those form coming through the skirt part. And for the most part, as far as the outfit, I have the outfit blocked out. Yeah, yeah, we did that. So now I'm taking a little second to zoom out, look at what I'm going to tackle next. I'm going to start cleaning up some of these lines. You can see me cleaning up this line around the arm because it's looking a little, you know, chicken scratchy. So it's, it's time to clean that mug up a little bit. So I'm gonna go back and clean that up just a little bit. Clean up the other side of the arm and this hand right here, I just put in a suggestion of what the hand could look like, but this is not gonna be the final hand here. So I will go back in and add a little bit more realism, a little bit more life to it maybe some fingers, you know what I'm saying, to it. Cause you can see with this hand, I started with a basic shape. You can see like a triangular shape to define the actual hand. And then the actual fingers just fall from there. And I use this quite a bit to draw hands cause I do not like drawing hands at all. Uh, but I can draw hands and this is what has helped me to draw them free of anxiety and stress, okay? I find like it's so interesting as an artist let me know if this is you in the comments I feel like I'm always thinking about the way it will look and even while I'm drawing it just judging it as I'm drawing it um, so this slow process that I'm taking with this drawing it really helps me to get through that and just to get over that like it's not a big deal it's okay you're gonna get it there the canvas is not going anywhere just keep drawing, look at it, zoom out, come back, keep drawing. It's not that serious. Take a break, walk away. You know, you start feeling like you're getting a headache, walk away. When you feel like you're getting stressed out, maybe turn some music on. You know what I'm saying? Maybe watch your show while you draw. It's not that deep. It should be fun also. I know so many like professional artists that they watch all type of stuff while they're drawing. Especially being in art school, we would be animating all type of stuff and we would be doing massive projects and the render times, we would watch a TV show or whatever in between that. Um, so it's, it's good to take breaks actually for your mental health. So now you can see I am shaping out the cloud-like 
watercolor like hair. I really took a lot of inspiration from watercolor. I've always liked the way that water the way that watercolor looks. So I was because Emma's drawing was done with watercolor as well. I really pulled from that here. And I think I've drawn clouds in the past. So with that in mind, I just started to brush in the lines. And this is a different brush from what I used for the actual lines and blocking everything out. I love this brush. It's like my favorite. I, I think I use this brush for my eraser as well. It's just so good. It's so easy to use, so intuitive. It feels like a Copic marker. If you guys know or you have used like the Copic markers before, it's exactly like this. It feels the exact same. And yeah, only cool. Th the cool thing about these is unlike Copics, you're not going to ever run out. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to ever need more ink. So now I'm adding details in the eyes. I want them to be blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a detail to the actual lips here. It's being very loose. This is like I this is how I like to draw very subjective very suggestive not subjective um, so just very loose I'm not I'm not caring too much about if it looks perfect I'm just kind of drawing and in, in trying to be very intuitive and free and loose now I'm drawing the edges where these forms connect to kind of suggest a shadow or an overlap here it's not super like in your face but just a little detail here that i feel like adds a little bit of a depth to this because it is so you know straight on and there isn't a lot of overlap here it's not like she's doing a crazy movement where her arm is going in front of her body or she's reaching to the camera it's just very straight on so I wanted to add a little bit there. Now I'm starting to block in the elements of the shirt and I don't, I have a reference, but I'm not really using it for like lighting. So I'm in my head thinking about where the natural folds would fall. Some of these are maybe a bit exaggerated, but this is like a sketch. So I'm just kind of drawing in where I see things, thinking about the human form under the shirt as well, just a little bit, you know, not freaking out very loose you can see I'm moving fast so I'm not staying in one area super long I'm just chilling you know just drawing just drawing being happy and now I'm going into where the arms are because there's like a little bit of an overlap there so I'm drawing the edges where the other side of the shirt over like over wraps the other arm Filled in the wrap, filled in the uh, the tie at the bottom of the shirt, and now I'm moving down to like the skirt, and I'm thinking maybe like leather, you know, in my brain. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm thinking of where the light would hit some parts, and where the highlight would be. I've seen this in so many like comic book type stuff, so I'm I'm really pulling from that, as far as what I can remember from that type of stuff. And that's what I'm talking about, visual library. You build up kind of like a, a library of references in your brain that you can pull from in your drawing. And uh, you can kind of suggest different things without it being exactly accurate, which is, it's fine to do. It's totally fine, totally okay. You can do that. So I've drawn in those shapes. I feel like I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to change the lines to blue in a few seconds. Five, there we go. I didn't even have to get down to one. So you can see the lines are now blue and this matches closer to Emma's drawing. I'm gonna make a few changes to the hand there and we will be on our way. The blue I think is a little bit different than hers, so I will make it a, a bit deeper, but we're gonna address that later. So right now we're gonna go into this hand. I'm making sure my brush settings are good. I think I might've been looking at the camera there as well. And now I am going to start blocking in this hand shape a little bit. It just doesn't look natural, it doesn't look real. So I'm gonna start thinking about how to tackle it. I think I looked at the other hand a little bit, to get inspiration about how to have it fall. This is another good time to pull a reference if you don't have one. 
if you can have hand references, it just helps so much to know what you're trying to go and tackle. I apologize again for my hand being right in the way. Uh, you cannot see anything. My hand is there. Here to, it is there to stay, okay? I'm going to add some different movement to the hand here by adding some changes to the, the uh, fingers. So you're gonna see that in a few seconds. So I tried to do like a just quick, super quick way because I don't like drawing hands, you guys. And I was like, that's not working. I'm gonna actually have to try. So you can see me adding a little bit of movement in the other finger um, behind what was the front finger. And I feel like that does it. Just that simple. I really enjoy drawing the actual fingers but sometimes the hand part is just frustrating. I don't know. I really like the character that it adds. And it feels really good when you're able to just do a simple line or two and you're done with the hand. I'm gonna change a little bit of the arm. Uh, that same arm, it just looks a little bit weird. So I will go in and change that a little bit. I'm just thinking about how I want it to lay. So I'm adding in some form lines around the arm. You can see that. And then I'm erasing away some of the other lines just to make sure that it feels natural and make sure that it lines up with the other arm as well. You can see that the arms are a little bit thicker at the wrist, even on the right. And that's something that I need. I didn't even tackle within the drawing and I'm seeing now. So it's interesting how your mind can come to different things over time with your own drawings. So you can see clearly one hand and wrist is bigger than the other, but you know, it's one drawing. It's something that I can analyze better next time, but I'm not gonna stress out about it. So right now I am adding a little bit more form to this cube or a table, not sure exactly what it is, but this flat surface that our hand is laying on. It adds a little bit more dimension to this. It would have been even better if it was like in front of her um, to kind of give this more depth, but I decided to do it beside her for some reason. I don't know. So I am pretty happy with this. I am going to add a little bit of a white to the background. Right now it's a great background so that it's a little bit more in line with the drawing that Emma did on the white piece of paper. So that's going to show up in a little bit. Happy with the face. Happy with the features of the face. That's my favorite part, really, the face. I feel like it brings everything together. And there you can see the white. Boom, shakalaka, boom. We made it. I hope you drew something as we went along. And if not, watch us again and let's draw together. Question of the day. Have you experienced art block? And what happened to motivate you to get started again?